Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Wednesday night episode of Brett's All Time Radio Show. A huge thank you for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home in the southwest of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Oh, now, very quickly, could I just mention on Saturday night, Axminster Carnival. So uh, look it up, Axminster Carnival. Uh, it's going to be stupendous. We're going. So if you can make it, well, we might just see you there at Axminster Carnival. It is uh, in Somerset and sort of just touching down into Devon and Dorset. You get these amazing carnivals that go on. They close the towns and they put on these carnival floats and they are absolutely fantastic. I don't really know anywhere else that does it, but in Somerset, they are brilliant. If you can make it to Axminster Carnival, we will see you there with bells on on Saturday night. It should be brilliant. Uh, I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Oh, and TikTok. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could give us a follow, we would love that. Also, we've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Now then, time for our Wednesday night adventure with the brilliant Rocky Jordan. This one first broadcast on the 25th of July, 1951. It's called The Valley of the Dead. Now, starring George Raft, we bring you a world of adventure with Rocky Jordan. I'm Rocky Jordan. I run the Cafe Tambourine in Cairo. It's been set out this way. Love strikes the speech dumb. The ears deaf. The eyes blind. Yeah, I've seen it happen. It's what you might call really losing your head over a dame. The Café Tambourine, crowded with tourists, camel drivers, women, cheats, forgotten men down on their luck, the lonely and the lost. For this is Cairo, gateway to the ancient East, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's transcribed Rocky Jordan story, Valley of the Dead. Remember me? Chris, the barkeep at the tambourine. Also the general dispenser of information. Yeah. Yeah, Rocky Jordan and me have been buddies for years. And usually things go kind of smooth between us. Not always, though. I'm thinking of that Valley of the Dead deal when the blow-up between us sounded like the echo of an A-bomb. And, well, listen... It was one of those quiet evenings around the cafe when it began. The crowd had thinned out, and a sad-faced legionnaire sat at the bar, staring into his half-empty glass of wine. A few locals were scattered around, lapping up some arak, and in the back booth, one of the more handsome young guides around Cairo was whispering into the ear of a sweet-faced tourist, and she was giggling. Then Rocky came in. Call me one, Chris. Uh, anything wrong? Call me one. Yeah, yeah, sure thing, right? You, um, been for a walk? Yeah, I've been for a walk. Well, uh, was wondering. Hey, yeah. Rock, you drink? Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Things have been kind of slow tonight. I was thinking maybe we could close up early. Julie's coming by. You two getting sort of serious? <laughs> yeah, I... Uh-uh. A couple of cops just come in heading this way. Good evening, Jordan Bay. Oh, hello, boys. We are looking for someone. A man wearing a dark suit. We thought perhaps he might have come in here a few moments ago. Mm, haven't seen him. Sorry. No, nah, no, nah, nobody come in the last few minutes except... What's that... happened, boys? There was a shooting at a small hotel several blocks from here. Oh, shooting, huh? Anybody get hurt? We are certain the man in the dark suit was wounded. We picked up his trail. Lost him near here in the native quarter. Oh, that's too bad. Yes. Thank you, Jordan Bay. Come along, Ahmed. I'm going back to the office. Close up whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah, sure. 
I watched Rocky as he walked to his office. He opened the door, took just one step inside, and then fell flat on his face. I got over there on the double, locked the office door, and hauled Rocky to the couch. And that's when I saw it. The blood trickling down his hand. I put in a fast call to a doc who would keep his mouth shut, and while he was patching up the rock shoulder, I went out and closed up the cafe. A half hour later, when I got back to the office, the doc was gone, and Rocky was all business. Chris, you know a gent named Brizak? Brizak? Bri... Bri... No, no. How about a guy named Fabian? Risto Fabian. Well, do you? Uh, no. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. For a minute there, I thought maybe I'd heard the name someplace before. I guess not. Here. Take a look at this. Check, huh? Yeah, 20,000 pounds. Boy, that's... Hey, Rocky, this check is... It's made out to you. I thought you didn't know Fabian. Well, I don't. Then why would he write you a check for 20,000? Look, I don't know. Honest, Rock. <laughs> Say, does this have anything to do with what happened back at the hotel? Yeah, but we don't have time for all that now. You got to get out of here. Lay low for a few days. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't argue. Here's 50 pounds. Get moving. Not until you tell Look, me what... You said you didn't know Brezak. You don't know Fabian. All right, I'll take your word for it. Now you take mine. Beat it. Now listen, Rock. And don't take your fiat. You'll be spotted too easily. Uh, it's probably Julie. She must have come around the alley. I'll get it. Hello, Rocky. Come on in, Julie. Sorry I'm late, Chris. Oh, hello, baby. Well, what's the matter, darling? Oh, ask him. You two boys been having a quarrel? Out of the blue, just like that. Get out of town, he tells me. What? Well, Rocky, what is this? Well, if you want your boyfriend to stay alive, you better tell him to do as I say. Where's the Fiat, Julie? Well, parked out front. Leave it there. Here, take the keys to my car. Get Chris up to Dave Amunia's place. I'm going to walk down to police headquarters and have a talk with Sam Sabaya. <laughs> Mr. Jordan. What's on your mind? I'd like to have a little chat with you. Sorry, I have an appointment. My name is Fabian. Mr. Fabian. Fabian? That changes things. I thought it would. Get in. Okay. I've been sightseeing before, so don't knock yourself out. Mr. Jordan, why did you go to that hotel tonight? Brizak's invitation was extended only to your bartender. I know, but Chris wasn't around when Brizak's messenger showed up. So I was asked to pass along the invitation. Which you did not do. That's right. Knowing Brizak as I do, I couldn't uh, resist going myself. The fact that the messenger mentioned 20,000 pounds, that had something to do with it too? You think I'm trying to cut in? That is exactly what I think. Suit yourself. Fabian, what is this all about? All I got from Brizak was double talk. And a bullet in the shoulder. He resented the fact that I took the check from him. I shall only have to write another one. Really, Mr. Jordan, it is a simple business deal. I wish to pay Chris for information which he has acquired. I'm not convinced. If you ask me, that check was just a come on to get Chris and Brizak together so that killer of yours could do his work quietly. Mr. Jordan. If you are as concerned over Chris's welfare as you seem to be, you will do as I say. For the police would like to know more of a certain death which occurred here in Cairo a month ago. A man named Griswold was murdered. A geologist. I read about it. The killer got away in a small car, a yellow Fiat. That wasn't in the papers. Neither was this. Brazak arrived a few moments after the killing. He heard someone running out the back door, saw the yellow Fiat race away into the night. Brazak fired after the car, succeeded in breaking one of the tail lights. That's quite a story, Fabian. It happened. You can ask your friend Chris, but I doubt if he would admit that he was the one who murdered Griswold. Oh, we seem to have driven right back to your cafe. You can let me off here. But I thought you had an appointment. I've changed my mind. Yes, I can appreciate your dilemma. Oh, there is the yellow fiat. I suggest you examine the tail light closely. Good night, Mr. Jordan. Jordan. What? 
Oh, uh, it's you, Sam. Admiring the little yellow car? What are you doing here? Waiting for you. What happened at the hotel tonight? What hotel? Jordan, when my men spoke to you in the cafe earlier this evening, they were not fooled. However, they thought it wise to confer with me before taking any steps. I don't know what you're talking about, Sam. Brezak, the shooting in the hotel room. What were you doing there, Jordan? And what is your connection with this man, Fabian? Fabian? Yes, Fabian. You never heard of him, eh? You stepped out of his car a few moments ago. Well, what have you to tell me, Jordan? Sam, I'm kind of confused. I can't tell you anything. Jordan, already there has been violence. I cannot allow... I can't tell you anything now, and nothing's going to make me, Sam. You'll have to give me some time. Jordan, tell me. Are you protecting someone? Or yourself? A little of each, maybe. Don't press me, Sam. I won't give. Very well, Jordan. I shall bide my time. But if there is any further violence, I shall hold you personally responsible. Sure. Now, tell me something, Sam. Who is this Fabian guy? Risto Fabian. Bachelor, age 52, founder of horses and American women. Citizen of Greece. Permanent residence, Athens. You seem to know a lot about him. He is not an unimportant man, Jordan. Have you ever heard of the Valley of the Dead? Sounds familiar. A great stretch of land in a country to the east, owned by Mr. Fabian, and now on lease to the Egyptian government. On lease? Oil? Oil. Thanks, Sam. I think you've given me something to go on. Jordan, after all, I am only a government clerk. And this is all I know about the matter. Griswold was hired by the government to do a survey on the Valley of the Dead to determine if the land had further oil potential. According to his report, it did not. So the government has decided not to renew the lease, which expires in a few months. And Griswold expired too, after he made the survey. Why? Do not ask me. I have lived long enough to know the value of minding my own business. The wills are played out and the lease is dropped. Fabian is left with a lot of worthless land and no income. Yes. What's missing, Allie? You don't go gunning for a guy who's supposed to have some information if what he's got isn't worth anything. What? Gunning? Ellie, how can I get my hands on a copy of Griswold's report? Griswold's house, perhaps, if there is anything left of his belongings. Or perhaps the girl who worked for him, uh, Miss Ware, Julie Ware. Julie? You know her. Yeah. Thanks, Allie. Night. Good night. Rocky! Look out! Look out! Rocky! You are listening to tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, starring Mr. George Raft. Dr. Christian's unique success with his patients is due as much to his keen understanding of people as to medicine. Every Wednesday evening on CBS, Gene Hirschholt stars as kindly Dr. Christian of River's End, bringing you stories full of warm understanding. Listen for Dr. Christian for another drama of real life, your next program over most of these same CBS stations. Now we take you back to Cairo in tonight's Rocky Jordan story, The Valley of the Dead. The shots from the moving car tore some big holes in the front of Ali's house, but none of them caught the rock. He'd spotted the car, dove for cover. Well, he picked himself up knowing full well it had been Fabian and Brizak. And ten minutes later, he walked into a low-slung apartment building not far from the tambourine. First thing he caught was the low wail of a sax. He listened for a minute, and it took him back. But then it stopped, and he walked down to room 212 and knocked. He tried again, and a door came open. But it was the one at the next apartment. 
And standing framed in the archway was a redhead with a neckline that looked like it was diving for pearls. Hello. Hello. Looking for Julie? Yeah. Friend of hers? In a way. Want to come in and wait? She might be back soon. Well, thanks. Maybe I will. Mona Clark, USA. You're an American, too, aren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Rocky Jordan. (laughs) Shake. It's not that I don't like far-off places. You just want to see something familiar once in a while. Yeah, I know the feeling. I've got a pot of coffee fixed. Want some? You got enough. Plenty. I'll get right away. Where are you from, Rocky? I mean, in the beginning. St. Louis. Good town. New Orleans, myself. Been there? Well, lots of times. Oh, do they still serve coffee and donuts in the French market? They did when I left. Gee, I miss it. Well, home next month. Never no more to Rome. Until next time. Here. You and Julie pretty good friends? Pretty good. I'm trying to find out about a fellow named Griswold. Griswold? Definitely a meatball. One of those guys who live on a steady diet of vitamins, always with the play. Yeah, I get the picture. Julie worked for him, you know. He's been up here a couple of times. Julie's boyfriend caught up with him here once and knocked him down the stairs. Tall, sandy haired fellow named Chris? Now, that's the one. I thought he'd kill Griswold. He was so sore. Of course, Griswold never bothered me. He knew I'd wrap him with my sacks. Sacks? Was that you playing just now? Uh Uh-huh. First sacks, Billy Baxter's all-girl orchestra, world tour. Give a listen. Light? Mm, Very good. How about this? (laughs) Neighbors. Mona, tell me something. What kind of work was Julie doing for Griswold? He did an oil survey on a place called uh, the Valley of the Dead or something. She typed up all the reports for him. I see. Julie uses Chris Yella Fiat quite a bit, doesn't she? Uh Uh-huh. Why? Just wondering. Thanks, Mona. Leaving? I... I'd like to finish that song for you sometime. Don't worry, baby. You'll get a chance to. Chris. Hi. What are you doing back at the cafe? You're supposed to be up at Dave Amunia's place. I'm not going any place until you tell me what you found out. All right. As near as I can make out, it goes like this. Risto Fabian thinks you killed Griswold for information about the Valley of the Dead. Oh, Rocky, you don't believe that, do you? No, but Fabian does, and that's why Breeze acts gunning for you. Chris, where's Julie? Well, staying with a friend at the island house in Bullock. Is she in trouble, too? More than she knows. What do you mean? Chris, how did the taillight get broken on your Fiat? What's that got to do with it? Answer me. Well, I did Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, Julie had the car that day. She said some kids broke it throwing stones. Sure. Chris, I'm going to tell you something you're not going to like. But I wouldn't say it unless I thought it was true. Well, go ahead. I'm listening. I think Julie's the one who killed Griswold. Rocky. It's lousy, I know. But it all fits. She typed Griswold's report on the Valley of the Dead. She's in the know. She drove your car that night. Not you. Don't you see you're playing a fall guy for a double-crossing, two-timing... Rocky, I'm... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. Forget it. But that doesn't change what I think. I'm going over to Bullock to see Julie. No, you're not. You go wandering around, you'll pick up a bullet. I'm going, Rock. You're not going to stop me. I guess I'll have to. Captain Zabaya. Sam? Rocky? Yes, Jordan? I just caught my bartender, Chris, stepping into the safe. I want him locked up. Hello, Julie. Oh, Rocky. Can I come in? Well, I... 
Packing? Yes, vacation. I thought I'd go up to Karnak for a few days. Kind of sudden, isn't it? What's that big envelope in your suitcase? Well, nothing. Just something I'm going to mail. Oh, let me see. Rocky! Oh, addressed to Julie Ware. American Express. Athens, Greece. Oh, I thought you said you were going to Karnak. Well, I... Fabian lives in Athens, doesn't he? What's inside of this, Julie? Leave it alone. You have no right to open it. Yeah, I know I haven't. Well... Griswold's report on the Valley of the Dead. This report any different from the one the government got? No. Give that to me. Take it easy. The other report said there was no oil in the Valley of the Dead. This one says there is. Give it to me. This is the correct one, isn't it? This is why you killed Griswold. (sighs) Rocky. Yeah. Don't be angry with me. You don't understand how big this is. I don't. All right. Let's work it out. Griswold did the survey on the land, found oil, and prepared this report. He was about to send it in, and I got smart, Rocky. I stopped him. What good would it do him to have the government pick up the options on Fabian's land? But if Griswold made a deal with Fabian to turn in a false report... The government would drop the option. Fabian would get his land back. Yes. Oil's worth a lot these days to a lot of different people and countries. Price is high. Fabian could make a fortune. So Griswold went for your idea. Yes. Fabian went for the idea, too, because he'd already been approached by a representative of a foreign power. But that's when Griswold began to act like an idiot. He said he'd settle for 20,000 pounds. (laughs) 20,000 pounds. That's less than $50,000. Fabian stood to make millions. So you and Griswold talked it over, and he ended up with a letter open in his back. You all start with the right report. Then you contact Fabian yourself and make a new deal. Yes, Rocky. And it can still be done. You and me, we can hit Fabian hard. A partnership and a billion-dollar business. Where's Chris? A nice, safe place. Why don't you get him out where it's not so safe? Fabian thinks he's the one who killed Griswold and knows about the oil. They'll be over in a minute. Fabian will go back to Athens satisfied. And then what? The day before the option comes due, you and I take a trip to Athens to see Fabian. We'll have partnership papers all drawn up. Fabian will have to sign them. It'll be too late for anything else. What do you say, Rocky? Lady, you're a louse. Rocky! What are you doing? Owning the police. Oh, no, you're not. Put down that poker. Oh, your shoulder hurts, doesn't it? Oh. So long, stupid. What? Do not let my gun startle you, my dear. Uh, Fabian. Hey. May I come in? I have been following you, Mr. Jordan. For at length, I have devised a method for bringing Chris, uh, shall I say, into the range of Brizak's gun. Chris is out of reach, Fabian. He is in jail. I know. You will telephone Captain Sabaya and tell him you made a mistake. Tell him to release Chris. So Brizak can be picked off coming out of the station? Yes. He's standing across the street from police headquarters now, waiting. Let him wait. Mr. Jordan, you will take the phone and do as I say. Sure, I'll take it. There! But you pulled it out of the wall. That's right, and you can't find much use for it now. Mr. Jordan! Go on, pull the trigger. That'll get you nothing. Mr. Fabian... Yes, my dear? I know how to get Chris out of jail. If it would be any help to you. And why should you want to help me? Because I'm afraid you'll be angry with me. Through no fault of my own. All this and no music? Why should I be angry with you, my dear? Because I have this. Look, I believe this is something you want. Well... Griswold's original report on the Valley of the Dead. Where did you get this? Chris gave it to me to hold for him. She's lying, Fabian. Silent. My dear, have you read this document? Oh, good heavens, no. It's full of such technical language I wouldn't understand it for a minute. Fabian, you're not going to go for this, are you? Chris doesn't know anything about this report. He didn't kill Griswold. She did. Oh, how can you say that, Mr. Jordan? Oh, he's lying, Mr. Fabian, to protect his friend. Yes, my dear, I understand. Tell me, how would you get Chris out of jail? Well, Chris and I have been quite friendly. It would be a simple matter for me to bail him out. 
Oh, excellent. My car is downstairs. Mr. Jordan, you will drive. I shall sit by you with my gun in your sight. Come, let's get started. Slow down, Jordan. This is as close to the police headquarters as I want to be. Stop there by the alleyway. Razak is just... Yeah, I see him. Razak. Razak. Yes, Mr. Fabian? This charming young lady here will go into the police station after our men. They will come out together, but she is not to be harmed. I understand, Mr. Fabian. She will not be harmed. Mr. Fabian, I think it might be better if I came out of the police station a few moments before Chris. So Mr. Brezak doesn't shoot me by mistake. An excellent precaution, my dear. Everything is clear, then? Yes, quite clear. Brezak. I know. She is to die also. Correct. Now take up your position across the street. Uh, we will time it to pick you up as soon as you have fired. Well, as you can see, a lot was going on while I cooled off in the Cairo jail. The first thing I knew about anything was when Julie suddenly showed up and bailed me out. Then, while I was picking up my wallet and things at the desk, she waltzed out the front door ahead of me. Well, that struck me kind of odd. I moved after her, out the front door, and started down the steps. And that's when all Hades broke loose. A black convertible up the street took off with a sudden jerk. Christa! Hit the ground! It was Rocky's voice, and I didn't ask any questions. Slugs him across the street, sail over my head. Then I saw Rocky behind the wheel of the car, and the joker beside him almost went through the windshield as Rocky grabbed the back of his neck and shoved. With his other hand, he yanked the wheel, and the car headed right for the spot where the gunman stood frozen in his tracks. Well, by then I didn't need anybody to draw me a picture. I caught up with Julie halfway up the block and hauled her back. Captain Zabaya and a flock of cops had piled out of headquarters and taken over. And when Rocky got through talking, they had it all. A little later, Rocky, Zabaya, and me were heading along the street on the way to the tambourine. I uh, guess I did it up good this time, huh, Rock? Forget it, Chris. No, no, I don't want to forget it. I played the prize, though. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, it's nothing to apologize over, Chris. It's one of those things that happened. You're all in it right, Chris. It happens. Why? Nobody knows. But nonetheless, it does. So many men, one time or another, are attracted by women of evil. You trying to tell us something, Sam? Well, as a matter of fact, Jordan, when I was a younger man, there was a dancer from Algiers who... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you too, huh? Yeah, thanks, Captain. I'll uh, turn off here, Rock, and go on home. See you at opening time as usual? Sure. See you then. He will be all right, Jordan. Do not concern yourself over him. Sure, Sam. He'll be all right. Uh, observe, Jordan. A new day. The city of Cairo awakes. Yeah, and the tourists will be pouring out on the streets before long. And already the vendor is striving to attract them to his shop. Ah, Jordan, listen. The call of the East. What? What is that? <laughs> that, Sam, is the call of the West. Excuse me, Sam. I'll see you around. Our star, Mr. George Raff, returns in just a moment. The flood victims of Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Illinois are depending on you 
Those whose lives have been jeopardized, whose homes have been destroyed, urgently need your assistance. The President of the United States has asked the American public to contribute at least $5 million through the local chapters of your American Red Cross for the relief of these citizens. So it's up to you. Give generously through your local Red Cross chapter. Help the flood victims. They need you. Now, here again is the star of our show, Mr. George Raft. Thank you. Well, Julie was quite a doll. Tall, big brown eyes, honey-colored hair. As far as Chris was concerned, she was out of this world. The law being what it is, she soon will be. Well, see you next week at the tambourine. Until then, Saida... Rocky Jordan stars Mr. George Raft with Anthony Barrett as Chris and Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya. Also heard in tonight's cast were Donald Morrison, Gene Bates, Ted Osborne, and Gloria Blondell. Our original music is composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Production and direction by Cliff Howell. Rocky Jordan is written by Larry Roman and Adrian John Doe. Bob Lamont speaking. This transcribed program came to you over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. And don't forget, we'll be back with more adventure tomorrow with those tales of the Texas Rangers going live at 5 p.m. UK time. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. But for now, thank you for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Sun Radio Show. Love you. Bye.